the news is all about Prince Charles, heir to the throne, and Princess Diana. They have separated, officially. By 1995, Charles and Diana had been separated for more than two years. Despite the fairy tale beginning, the marriage had long turned sour. It was fairly well known in the UK and frankly around the world that Diana and Charles's marriage was in deep trouble. The year before, Charles had given an interview where he admitted that he had been unfaithful to Diana. Did you try to be faithful to your wife? Yes, absolutely. And you were? Yes. Until it became irretrievably broken down. I think when they separated, the public were very aware that they'd been unhappy for a very long time. I think Diana was very visual. We all knew she was unhappy. I think people's hearts bled for her, actually. I think everybody then knew about Camilla. Everybody was aware of that whole sort of trio and how long that had been going on for. So I think everybody knew that it was a very unhappy time. On November 20th, 1995, the 34-year-old princess sat down for a secret interview with Panorama, a current affairs program on the BBC. The interview was conducted by 32-year-old Martin Bashir without the knowledge of Buckingham Palace. Martin Bashir was a well-known UK broadcaster. He was on the rise in 1995 when he did his Panorama interview with Diana. Panorama would have been a show kind of comparable to Dateline, um, an evening news program. The hour-long one-on-one sit-down revealed private details of Diana's long-suffering marriage, which began with her postnatal depression. What effect did the depression have on your marriage? Well, it gave everybody a wonderful new label. It's Diana's unstable and Diana's um, mentally imbalanced. And unfortunately, that seems to have stuck on and off over the years. Everyone within the royal family knows that maybe the number one rule is what happens in the royal family stays in the royal family. Diana didn't concede that. Diana felt that she should be allowed to have a voice, and she felt unfairly maligned in much of the UK press. According to press reports, things became so difficult that you actually tried to injure yourself. Mm. Is that true? Mm. When no one listens to you, or you feel no one's listening to you, all sorts of things start to happen. I think that she really wanted the British public to sort of know her point of view. I think she just had enough. I think she felt it was important that her sons saw on tape like a living memory of how she felt, what she'd gone through, where she was, what her marriage was about. What did you actually do? Well, I just hurt my arms and my legs. And I work in environments now where I see women doing similar things. And I'm able to understand completely where they're coming from. Besides the postpartum depression and self-harm, Diana also revealed she had suffered from bulimia. I had bulimia for a number of years, and that's like a secret disease. You inflict it upon yourself because your self-esteem is to low ebb, and you don't think you're worthy or valuable. It's really impossible to overstate the shock of Diana's Panorama interview. On so many levels, she blew the lid off the fairy tale that everyone had watched in 1981 when she looked like the Princess Bride, and she was. But here we are in 1995, and Diana is a different woman. She is broken in many ways. She is just stunningly candid. You fill your stomach up four or five times a day, some, some do it more, and it gives you a feeling of comfort. It's like having a pair of arms around you, but it's temporarily temporary. Then you, you are disgusted at the bloatedness of your stomach and then you bring it all up again. She talked about things that not only carry a lot of stigma for most people in the world, but for royals, absolutely unheard of to share these kinds of problems and pain. We know that bulimia and self-harming and she had postnatal depression, those three compounded together. To have no help, you can't imagine how awful that would be. And one always imagines that everybody in the royal family is surrounded by a million people and a million people who are gonna help. And actually to be in that situation, which she was, not being able to help, but still having to kind of come out of that or periods of that and be public or be seen. And she really struggled. She really didn't have the help that she needed during that time. 
The interview was full of bombshells, but the biggest moment of all came when Bashir asked the princess if she had been aware of her husband's nine-year affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. Yes, I was, but I wasn't in a position to do anything about it. What evidence did you have that their relationship was continuing even though you were married? A, a woman's instinct is a very good one. <laughs> In the history of royal scandals, there is none bigger than the Charles, Diana, Camilla love triangle. What effect did that have on you? Pretty devastating. Rampant bulimia, if you can have rampant bulimia, and just a feeling of being no good at anything and being useless and hopeless and failed in every direction. Yeah. Now, for years, this was known, and this was something that um, had been leaked to tabloids and front pages of newspapers, but it wasn't until the Panorama interview that we heard Diana, from her own lips, address it. Do you think Mrs. Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? And the iconic quote that she shared with the world was, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> To hear her come out and say that, there are three of us in this marriage, I mean, what, what a stunning statement. And it was really sort of the ultimate distillation of the train wreck that was her marriage. I think the devastated Diana, I think she did have a huge amount of love for Charles. I've always believed that she would have loved it to have worked. I think she was very young, very naive when she married him, and I think she thought love conquers all. Nearly 23 million people watched this historic program, including the Queen. One month later, Elizabeth sent both Charles and Diana a letter asking them to officially end their marriage. The divorce was finalized in August of the following year. It sort of set Diana free in a way. It, 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 you know, she'd said her piece, she'd done it publicly, Charles could then be public with Camilla because everybody knew about it. So it, in a way, it sort of set them free. I, I think we saw in Diana a certain relief in her, maybe in her sort of physical appearance. She looked like, OK, that's done. The seismic impact of the Panorama interview can almost best be measured in the Queen's reaction. The Queen responds by saying, you know what, I think this marriage is over and I think you two need to divorce. Now, that's a big deal uh, for a lot of reasons, but especially because the queen is the head of the Church of England. She's extremely religious. Divorce is not something that has been a part of her life ever. So for her to recommend that her firstborn son, who is her heir, who is the next in line to be king, that he seek a divorce, it really reflects the gravity of Diana's interview. After Panorama, the view of Diana shifted somewhat from certainly her early days, of course, as a magical fairy princess, to a woman who had really endured more personal anguish than anyone realized previously. I don't sit here with resentment. I sit here with sadness because a marriage hasn't worked. I sit here with hope because there's a future ahead, a future for my husband, a future for myself, and a future for the monarchy. Your Royal Highness, thank you.